Before we sort of bridge into the next area of the program, there is one area that I'd like us to kind of talk about a bit. And, and it really is the tail end before we bridge into leadership. It's looking at what the role of the working leader is within the greater scheme of things in the organization. You know, when you look at an organization from top to bottom, you have your executive level. In small organizations, that will be the business owner, the president, that sort of thing. In a, in a much larger organization, it might be a plant manager or a general manager. And then you have the management level, so that would be your quality managers, your finance managers, and so forth. Then you have a supervisory level where the responsibilities kind of expand out, the number of people reporting usually go up. Then you have this lead hand working leader level, which is the level that we're focused on in this training program. Below the lead hand are the employees, and below the employees are the customers. Now again, you could almost invert this upside down and put the customers at the top, which is probably where they deserve to be. Uh, but just for the intent of this discussion, it's to realize that one of the dilemmas you get at, if you're not at the very top and you're not at the very bottom, is that you're caught in this squeeze, as you could probably relate to. So what ends up happening is direction, goals, feedback, flow downhill, Something else flows downhill, I think, but uh, won't be mentioning it. Fantastic comes to mind. So the reality is that we do get direction and information that flows down from the, from the top in terms of direction and feedback. And then what we have is we have employees at the same time and customers giving us feedback sort of going up the organization, which leaves the lead hand or the supervisor or the working leader kind of caught in this squeeze play trying to keep everyone happy above them in the organization and also to try to, to create satisfaction from the employees below them. So the reality is that um, the lead hand role is really a difficult one. Uh, not necessarily too much different from the supervisor's role, but the, the key thing is the lead hand and the employees sometimes are blended together because you're kind of one of the people doing the work and exhibiting that leadership role. So what, we're, what we want to sort of express to you is the reality is that you do act as a filter, if you will, to take the direction and information that comes from people above you, and you almost put it through your translation device in order to make meaningful contributions and communications to your employees. And that kind of brings us to a question. Is there a policy or procedure in your organization that you know in your heart you don't support but you're expected to support it in terms of carrying the company's mission or message. For most people, there's some policies or procedures that you're expected to enforce that in your own heart you may not agree with. Isn't that possible? Right? And so your role is really to take that information, and even if you disagree with it a little bit on a personal level, the reality is you're expected to consistently apply that message across. And if you choose not to, so this is where we get into where some working leaders are easygoing, almost too easy on the people that work for them, others are maybe too hard. In either case, what you're doing is you're creating this level of inconsistency. Now in a house, or a household, or a family, we'd call that running to mom or dad, depending on who will give me the answer that I'm looking for. In an organization, though, it can be very distracting. Uh, some organizations that are unionized um, have issues around consistency of work rules and implementation of policies. Those that are non-unionized still have issues around fairness and consistency. And so we really do each other a disservice and we actually do ourselves a disservice when we decide for ourselves which policies that we're going to enforce and which ones we're not going to enforce. So you really want to seek out a consistency amongst the leadership group so that you all are talking the same language and that way when there is a difference um, you can all stand united around one central theme. The other thing you realize is when you decide to play favorites and, and apply policies and procedures inconsistently you, you might think you're doing people a favor who you consider your favorites. What you're actually doing though is you're creating dissension, you're creating conflict, and you're actually not helping yourself in terms of your overall goals. So do you have some discretion as a leader? Yes, you have some discretion. Should you watch how you use your discretion? Yes, because it may actually come back to haunt you in a different way. So just realize that your, your issues here are you've got employees who will, who will feed you information, some of which you filter so that it moves up the organization. You definitely filter a lot of information that comes down in the organization.